Hi everyone, welcome to this new session of Mastering Science and Technology Let's Learn Initiative. In this third episode of Let's Learn, we will be learning about Kepler mission. Kepler mission was in the news recently because NASA had declared declared that uh, Kepler mission won't be operational from now. It, they officially declared that as an inoperational mission and because of its fuel loss, it lost its control system working because of some fuel problems. It, it, you know, it was drained out of the fuel. So, Kepler mission, let's have a look on this. Before that, let's see what are, what are the exoplanet studies that is happening. What is the reason for that? What is the significance of that? See, since the century, since the beginning of, you know, the ancient time, uh, the BC and after that AD and all those, you know, there were lots of astrologers and astronomers who were uh, keen about learning the, you know, uh, outer solar system, learning about the space, the astrophysics, different heavenly bodies, different celestial bodies, uh, sun, uh, sun and different planets and what is beyond the solar system, all these things have been you know, studied from, from the ancient time itself. So, it is a centuries old quest of man, of mankind to learn about what is, what is, you know, they, are there any earth like planets outside, are there any other habitable planets just like earth. So, this quest for other worlds like earth has led to the discovery of hundreds of planets orbiting other stars. So, Kepler mission was one of such mission, uh, you know, mission, one, one of such initiative that helped to find out lots of, lots of, um, something like 2700 exoplanets, you know, in this, in this universe, in this Milky Way itself. So, Kepler mission was a, actually it's a heliocentric, it's a survey satellite, it's a, it's a telescope actually, that, that learned, that had found out, discovered a lots of exoplanets with habitable, habitable nature. Now, what is habitable nature? It can sustain water in the liquid form. That is the thing. What will happen if earth will be destroyed and sooner or later after this black hole and uh, the sun gets destroyed then other planets are also destroyed along with that. The sun is the center, it is a force, it is a driving force behind it. So what will happen after that? So where uh, we should retain our humankind, we should retain the biodiversity and the earth like characters in somewhere. So to quest to find out that we had uh, this many space agencies including NASA and uh, ESA and even our ISRO itself have done lots of experiments to find out what is there, earth like, are there any earth like planets surrounding. So, there are three types of exoplanets basically, gas giants uh, like this Jupiter and uh, Jupiter and Saturn, then hot super earths in short period orbits like very hot earth, earth sized but very very hot planets and ice giants just like Uranus and Neptune. So, Uranus and Neptune like like that planets are called ice giants and Jupiter like planets are called gas giants etc. So, the challenge now is to find terrestrial planets with habitable zone. Habitable zone means it should be terrestrial planet means earth like planets as well as it should be habitable means it should sustain water at liquid state means it should have a room temperature just like like 30. Uh, to 35 degrees Celsius, that is what you know habitable climate temperature means. That is a definition given by uh, this uh, space scientist. Kepler mission was spe specially designed to survey our region of the Milky Way galaxy to discover hundreds of thousands of millions of Earth size and smaller planets in or near the habitable zone. So, it should have almost the same temperature of the Earth. So, the temperature determines whether, whether water will be retained in the liquid state, gas form or uh, in the solid form. So we need in our earth, we have 3 by 4th covered by water that is in liquid state. So, that, that is a criteria to declare a planet to be habitable or not. So, Kepler finds such planets, very far away planets with similar to earth or it, it should be something similar to earth, the size should be similar to earth and near or exactly habitable in nature. That is That was a mission actually. And uh, they, it, it, it is usually determined, it usually determines a fraction of hundreds of billions of stars in our galaxy that might have such planets. So, this Kepler mission will scan the entire Milky Way and uh, find out different stars. They will, it will, it will search on, it will go on scan and find stars with the planetary systems. And with the planetary system, they will scan each and every planet of Earth like size and which is habitable in nature. So that was basically what Kepler used to do. Right now, 
Kepler is in operational, it does it has ended its function, and uh, let us see the details of Kepler mission. So, the scientific object objective, as we have seen, was to explore the structure and discovery of planetary system. So, that is the exact appropriate statement that we need to have. Uh, in, in the statement itself, you should not need a confusion, it was not just finding away any super clusters or any galaxies, it was to find planetary systems to find out terrestrial planets just like earth, earth like planets with habitable, near or uh, habitable nature. So, that was uh, the, the Kepler missions basic objective. So, uh, among that, among among those functions, it will, it will determine the percentage of the terrestrial and larger planets, it will determine the distribution, sizes and uh, shapes of the orbit. So, uh, it will it will have the percentage of how many, how much percentage of uh, exoplanets are terrestrial like that, that that kind of a statistics should be done and it will determine the distribution and sizes of the uh, shape of the orbits which where this plan, these planets will be orbiting their own uh, stars. It will, uh, it will estimate how many planets are there you know with multi star systems means uh, we our solar system is a single star system there are lots of planetary systems uh, where it is multi star like two or more stars will be there around which um, lots of planets will be rotating that is multi star systems it will identify additional members of each discovered planetary system like one there if if, if this kepler mission finds one planetary system then it will survey it will scan all the other planets all all the other additional members in that particular planetary system it will determine the properties of those stars. So, you know, how it, is it sun like, uh, is it having, uh, you know, the size similar to sun or not, it will compare it with sun. It will also determine the properties of the planets, like what is the atmospheric temperature of the planet, will that planet have atmosphere or not, just like earth, etc, etc. So, all, the, all those properties, you know, regarding, um, the, the, it is depending upon its finding of the temperature, the size of the orbit, the size, the mass of the planet, etc. They will determine the properties of the stars and the planets they harbor. So, uh, the method they use is transit method. Transit method. Now, we have seen recently in 2017, NASA had launched transiting exoplanet survey satellite. So, that is TESS actually. TESS. Now, uh, in that, the T stands for transit. Now, what is a transit method? What is what is it actually? Let us let's have a look on that and then uh, we will see the functions of it. So, transit method of detecting extrasolar planets. When a planet passes in front of a star as viewed from the earth, the event is called a star, uh, you know, uh, a transit. For example, if I am, if I am, if I am, if we are standing on the earth and we are viewing the sun, okay, with a telescope or with a magnifying, uh, uh, you know, something, magnifying lens or something like that, so we are, we are constantly looking on that and suppose that a planet Venus, you know, passes on this, know uh, as part of its revolution it passes uh, to the sun towards the sun and it, it will be seen as a small dot moving in this direction or in this direction as viewed from the earth so similarly this this movement of this planet around the sun as viewed from the earth we, we see it as a small tiny dot so that method where we view the planets passing over the particular star as a small tiny dot that is called transit. So, Kepler mission will you know see continuous, it will observe continuous such transits happening in the Milky Way, it will it will go on monitoring it, it will have you know multiple multiple times of scanning will be done and it will, it will find out some star and it will wait for any transit to happen. So, depending on the transit by the intensity change of the star's light, so for example, now the star is having uh, some if this is the graph if I am drawing and it will be having like this, the intensity will be constant and when a planet, when, when, when a planet starts entering into this, entering in the you know, vicinity of this, then the intensity will drop and then when the planet completes its revolution, when it exits, then the intensity will re retain again. So, this dip in intensity of light is measured and depending on that, Kepler will do calculations, it will do you know mathematics using the Kepler's law of planetary motion and then it will find out the mass of the planet, it will find out the temperature of the planet, it will find out the size of the planet etc etc, the shape of the orbit all those things. So, it is based on this intensity difference of the star's light, that star where the planet will be harbored. So, that is what transit method, 
method means. When a pl planet passes in front of a star as viewed from Earth, the event is called transit. We can observe an occasional Venus or market, uh, Mercury transit. That is what we can view because Venus and Mercury comes, you know, in between Earth and Sun. So we can view in between Earth and Sun. We can see Venus and Mercury transiting. So that is uh, that is what we see from the Earth. These events are seen as small black dot creeping across the Sun. Similarly, when it happened, when when the Kepler mission find out lots of other stars in the Milky Way, they, they find out it find out planets by looking into tiny dips in the brightness of the star when a planet crosses in front of it. So we say this as uh, the transit of a uh, tra uh, transit of a planet. So that is that is a method they use, uh, this Kepler mission use for uh, making uh, you know the planetary studies or exoplanetary studies. So once detected, the planet's orbital size can be calculated from the time period and it uses Kepler's third law of uh, planetary motion and uh, the size of the planet, the shape and size of the orbit, the temperature of the planet and all these things, whether it, it is habitable or not, all these findings are done uh, using this, this Kepler mission's uh, uh, transit method. And uh, right now Kepler has, in a, no, I told it is it's inoperational, uh, it was launched by NASA in 2009, March 2009. Uh, into a heliocentric orbit. Heliocentric orbit means sun. Sun is the helios, and uh, helio the sun will be the center, and it will orbit around the sun. So that is that is called heliocentric orbit. Now Earth is rotating in a heliocentric uh, orbit. Every other planets, all the asteroids, etc., they are rotating around heliocentric. Comets are rotating in the in a heliocentric orbit because sun is the center, and uh, something rotating around the sun, then that particular thing is called as uh, heliocentric. So, it was named after the astronomer Johannes Kepler and uh, it announced, NASA announced its retirement on October 30, 2018, that is, uh, you know, uh, one week ago. So, that is why this is important and uh, if we say some, uh, you know, findings of this, uh, Kepler has detected more than 2700 potential alien planets since March 2009 and uh, see some of the reason, it has, it has in, in the year 2016 itself. Uh, Kepler had found out like 1,284 new planets. So that much is the database it is giving. Like every year, it adds on, adds on. See, in the nine years of its service, it had found out like 2,700 certain uh, potential alien planets or uh, nearly habitable Earth-like terrestrial exoplanets in this Milky Way. And uh, regarding uh, other missions or observatory observatories to the study the exoplanet, other than Kepler mission, we have. European Space Agencies, uh, we have the Gaia mission and uh, Cheop, Cheops that is characterizing exoplanet satellites that is the name given by ESA, Cheops and NASA has three, uh, from that the famous one is TESS, Transiting Exoplanet Survey Satellite that is the important one because that was the most recent and the most ambitious. Then we have the NASA's powerful James Webb Telescope, again uh, James, uh, the Space Telescope will do exoplanet study as well as uh, other other galaxy studies and universe origin studies etc and wide field infrared survey telescope uh, that is w first again by nasa so all these three are by nasa these are some of the missions that are deployed to do such studies on exoplanets which with you know, habitable character and etc so that's all for today uh, thank you